Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you all for joining us for today's webinar, where we're going to be talking to you about how to scale your e-commerce business with social media and email automation. I do hope you are uh, safe and sound wherever you are, that you have a lovely weather and that you're going to be enjoying and learning today. Uh, well, we're going to be talking about some important ways how you can grow your e-commerce business uh, with some proven uh, social media and email automation strategies. Um, I think everyone is, uh, has already received our notifications about the webinar starting, so let's get to it. So uh, my name is Michael, uh, Michael Leszczynski. I'm the head of content marketing at Gear Response, uh, an email automation platform that serves e-commerce businesses. And today, our guest and co-host is Kasia Słonawska, who's marketing executive at Napoleon Cat. I'm um, not going to be talking about myself, uh, a few words about Kasia. So Kasia is a passionate content marketer and growth, uh, growth marketer, uh, growth hacker, who's uh, been in content marketing for over three years, helping businesses of different sizes social media, uh, to grow through social media automation. She's written many blog posts on numerous, um, numerous marketing blogs. Uh, she's also educated in marketing. So uh, I'm sure she'll be joining us and sharing some useful tips how you can grow your e-commerce business via social media through which I think everyone is using it today. And we're consuming a lot of stuff on social media, uh, whether we want it, whether we plan on doing it. Uh, I know it affects our um, purchase behavior, definitely. Kasia, say hi to everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here with you today. Michal, thanks for the introduction. Yeah, uh, as Michal mentioned, I'm Kasia, I'm from Napoleon Cat, and I'll be talking about scaling your e-commerce business on and through social media. So yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Kasia. And Napoleon Cat is a social media automation platform uh, about which you'll hear a bit more later in this discussion in this uh, webinar as well. All right. So let's start. Let's start with a quick look at the agenda of this presentation. So first of all, uh, we'll discover why actually social media is a perfect platform for growing your e-commerce business. And then we'll discuss a couple of tactics that you can use to use the potential of social media to its fullest. Uh, then you'll learn how to turn one-time customers into loyal repeat clients. And finally, I will show you a solution that will help you manage your social media in the most effective way and simply avoid all distractions. So uh, let's start. And let's start with a simple question. Why social media? Uh, please think about the traditional commerce, the brick and mortar stores. They have this very unique opportunity to present their products in a very natural social context. They are where the social life happens. They are in the busy city malls, in the uh, in city centers. And if you're only selling your products online, you may have this feeling that you're missing on this opportunity, but nothing could be more wrong. Uh, actually, in the 2022, uh, social life happens on social media. Uh, in fact, uh, almost half of the entire US population is, uh, is on Instagram as per March this year. Uh, so yeah, this is huge. And the uh, social media platforms, Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok, and the others, they do realize this potential of social media for e-commerce. And they've started developing different commerce-friendly feature. Let's have a look at some of them. So first of all, uh, Instagram shopping. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the feature, but just in case, this is uh, Instagram shopping, uh, this is a feature that allows you to create a dedicated dedicated product page for all of your products on Instagram. And then you can tag these products in your posts, in your reels, Instagram stories, and so on. But there, there's more to Instagram shopping, actually. Uh, when you enter the application, at the, at the bottom of the application, uh, there's a tab uh, called shopping. And once you enter it, uh, you will be, you will see a curated list of products. Uh, this is based on your previous behavior on Instagram, which means these are products that you potentially uh, like and that you may actually buy. Uh, once you click on a product, you can check the details, uh, you can check its price, 
And if you're based in the United States, you can even buy directly through Instagram. If you're from outside of the United States, uh, you can uh, just visit the product page on the website. Um, so yeah, this is a great, uh, great solution to drive traffic to your website or to sell directly on Instagram. And there's more. Uh, in, uh, in Instagram shopping, there's also something called guide. And you can create guides for, uh, let's say, um, the best gifts for Mother's Day or the best Christmas gifts for teenagers. Uh, you curate a list of products. Uh, of course, you add your products there that can be different products. And yeah, this is a less known feature, but uh, the potential, its potential for e-commerce is really uh, great. Uh, so these are the current features. They, they are currently available, but there's much more to come. For example, Instagram announced that they'll be launching an affiliate program, uh, which means that um, creators and influencers, they'll be able to browse products on their own and choose products on their own and then promote them on their social media profiles without even contacting the brand. Uh, obviously, they will receive a commission from, for every sale made from their recommendation. And this solution is great not only for creators, but also for brands. If you've ever collaborated with an influencer, you definitely know how, um, how difficult it is to, um, to actually uh, choose the best influencer for your product or to, um, to decide on the um, terms of the collaboration. So this, uh, this affiliate program would actually cut on the time that you usually dedicate to these tasks. If you want to uh, know ahead of time about what's coming next on social media, I recommend that you follow the official blog's interest, pin, uh, interest, <laughs> Instagram, Pinterest, and other social media platforms. That's a great source of knowledge. Uh, Okay, and now you know some of the native features and I'd like to discuss um, some tactics that you can use to, to use this, the fullest potential of these features and in general of social media. So social media management is a um, complex uh, process. It's not only that you just post and the magic happens on its own. Uh, there's much more to this and um, let's go through the entire social media management process step by step. Uh, your first step is to decide when exactly to post on, on social media uh, to, uh, to receive the best um, results. And the internet is full of articles such as the best times to post on Instagram or the best time to post on Pinterest. But the truth is that the best time to post can be different for different brands. And uh, what you can do is to discover, um, uh, is to dig deeper into your audience demographics and discover what their activity patterns are. So for example, you can enter Instagram insights. This is what you can see in the screenshot and discover these, these patterns. Um, this may be a little bit more complicated if you cater to an international audience. Uh, because their activity patterns may not overlap with your waking hours. But there's a solution to this. Uh, you can schedule your posts using a social media scheduling tool. And Napoleon Cat is one of these tools, but I will say a little bit more uh, about Napoleon Cat later on. Just a sip of water. And let's continue. Um, so by posting at the right time, uh, you, uh, it's easier for you to reach your audience and actually make sure that your post doesn't disappear in the abundance of content on social media. And yeah, in other words, you just multiply your chances to beat the algorithm. All right, so once you discover the best time to post, it's time to actually post, but you either make it engaging or you don't post at all. Uh, I've listed uh, a few of and great engagement tactics um, that I would like to share with you today. And let's start with an example from Gizu. Uh, it's a beauty brand. They produce hair care products. And um, the main ingredient uh, in these products is uh, honey. And that's why they talk so much about bees. Um, and in this case, they, they are trying to engage their audience uh, with Instagram captions. So please have a look. 
pick your B season 2022 faves. Uh, what are you choosing? And this simple question generated almost 300 comments. Um, yeah, so if you want to uh, engage your audience through, uh, through uh, captions, uh, you need to ask questions in captions, and you can also consider evoking controversy, but this is all according to your brand strategy and brand values. Uh, in general, uh, comments are a great indicator of engagement, and this is what the algorithms uh, take into consideration. And this is what makes your uh, your post actually reach the broadest um, and uh, the broadest audience possible. Uh, the other uh, the other example comes from this plate. Uh, this, on the other hand, is a um, they, they produce metal posters, and uh, they are actually our client, and we've been observing their uh, strategy for quite a long. They are really good at engaging uh, their audiences through social media. Uh, we actually have a case study um, where they share with us their uh, tips on uh, converting one customers into loyal clients through social media. And Michal, if I can ask you to, to send the link uh, at the moment, thanks. All right, so this is the link. Uh, Michal has just sent you the link to the case study, so you can save it uh, for later. And, um, and now let's just discuss this, this particular example. So this time, uh, this page decided to um, engage their audience through uh, Instagram stories using the Instagram story stickers. Uh, they asked a very simple question, what's your favorite sport? And users can answer directly uh, through the Instagram story, which is very user friendly. They can just answer and, um, and go to another uh, story. So people start answering and what this play did, uh, they started um, publishing these answers together with a recommendation of a uh, poster matching the, a person's interest. So for swimming, we have this one, for example, and of course the, the, the suggestion uh, also uh, has also a link to this particular poster uh, on their website. Um, this is a pretty simple uh, tactic, yet it's genius and it's very personalized. And my recommendation here is to use these stickers on Instagram stories and um, you can use polls, you can use service, these questions. There are some more. They are what really engages uh, users um, on Instagram stories. And the last but not least, uh, this is an example from our own um, profile. And the recommendation here is always reply to every single comment that you receive. Uh, in this way, you will not only show your appreciation towards your audience, but also uh, you will um, you will at least double the number of comments under your post. And I say at least double because you can also ask follow-up questions in your, within your answer and uh, encourage uh, users to uh, engage in further conversation. And again, this is a great tactic for growing the reach of your content. Um, and yeah, you know, likes are great, but they are mostly just a vanity metric. And what we want for, e for your e-commerce business is higher sales. And when you actually engage with your users, in con with your followers in conversations, um, you have this unique chance to, to actually sell your product. Um, all right, so picture this. You can keep on investing in uh, acquiring new followers, in, uh, in ads, in posting more and more and more. But there is something that you should pay, also pay attention to. This is your current audience, your current clients, uh, your current followers. If you engage with them in conversations, they start building this bond with your brand. Mm, they start to, uh, they become loyal clients and they start to refer your product to their friends and families. And these people, on the other hand, they come to your brand, they come to your social media platforms, they start engaging for you and the growth loop keeps on giving. And this is how you can scale your, so, uh, your uh, business uh, thanks to social media engagement. All right, but uh, along the way, there, you may encounter some blockers. 
And these may be, for example, you may start receiving so many comments that it simply becomes impossible for you to answer all of them. Uh, the other one, your social media platform may become your customer service channel. People may start asking typical customer service uh, queries uh, in private messages, in comments. Uh, the other one, you may not have a dedicated social media specialist or team um, to, to handle your social media. Um, and in fact, 64% of marketers claim that uh, they um, manage company social media as just one of their multiple uh, job responsibilities. And the last one, um, social media is full of distractions. I am sure you know this feeling when you enter a social media platform just to reply to a comment on your um, business page. And you, you reply to this comment and then you start scrolling, you blink and 30 minutes have left. So yeah, th this is really, uh, really easy to lose the track of time on social media. But uh, there is a solution. If at least one of these uh, concerns you, you can, I need to tell you that you can gather all of your comments, messages, reviews, and other interactions in a unified inbox. And uh, this is a real time saver and a productivity tool, especially if you tend to uh, waste uh, too much time on public scrolling. And once you gather all of these interactions in a single dashboard, uh, you, um, you'll see that um, now it's easier to focus on what really matters for, for your business, which is replying to these comments, to these messages, which is building relationships with your customers. Mm, and I'm also sure that you will quickly realize that some of these questions keep on repeating. For example, at Napoleon Cat, we've observed that uh, e-commerce businesses receive a lot of questions about shipping, uh, about available um, colors and sizes. Uh, and I know it can just become frustrating to, um, to reply to the same uh, question all over again. It can also become frustrating to delete comments that um, that in, uh, with offensive language, for example. This is a very common problem, and um, it can even get frustrating um, to be, to reply with uh, heart emojis to all these love comments. And this is absolutely great, of course. But uh, you know, it's a repetitive task, and um, I understand that. Mm, it may not require your personal attention. So just to uh, save some time, save some energy for you, you can use uh, um, automation rules. And these rules can be triggered by either A, uh, the type of content, which can be, for example, um, all comments under Instagram ads or all comments, including links. Uh, or these, these can be triggered by uh, a keyword or keyword, for example, ship or shipping. Um, and once a rule is triggered, you can um, perform the following actions. For example, you can hide or delete the comment. You can also publish a response in a comment or in a message. And I know that you might be concerned that uh, not to look like a robot, but there's a solution to this. For every trigger, you can set up up to 20 different responses, um, which adds this human touch to your Mm, mm, to your yeah to your responses simply um so yeah th this is a real time saver for for many um yeah and to, to sum up uh, after this presentation i want you to remember four things so first of all social media is a perfect channel for growing your e-commerce business because uh, of the abundance of uh, commerce friendly features if you want to scale your business on social media, uh, you need a strategy for every step of the social media management process from uh, deciding on what's the best time to post to, um, to actually engaging with your audience after, the, after posting. Uh, you should pay as much attention to your current audience as you pay to acquiring new followers, new clients. Uh, in this way, you will turn one-time customers into loyal, loyal repeat clients, and also they will become your brand advocates. And 
last but not least, for maximum results, you should really think about yourself. Uh, think about the energy and time that you can dedicate to social media management and think what tasks you can actually automate, what tasks doesn't, don't require your uh, personal attention and what do, and just automate what, what, what can be automated. And um, yeah, and save your energy for what's really important for growing your business. Yeah, so that's it. Um, I hope everyone uh, has found something for themselves in this presentation. Um, Michal, over to you. All right. Thank you, Kasia, for sharing these insightful ideas and tips. Uh, there were a couple of cool questions that I hope we can answer at the end of this presentation. Uh, the latest one was whether this is a good response that you were discussing in this very slide, but no, that's Napoleon Cat. So <laughs> if you want to automate your social media, uh, social media communication, then definitely check out Napoleon Cat. We'll have some offer for you maybe later in this presentation. So feel free to stick with us uh, till the end of this presentation. So once again, thank you, Kasia. Uh, just jumping into uh, email automation now. And just to uh, add some more credit to uh, to social media, just this week I did buy because of social media, because of Instagram. And I know that's not the only social media platform out there, but I did buy uh, a yoga mat for my wife just because uh, the shop that I'm, I'm following did finally uh, inform us that um, that that product, that the, the design that they had is back in stock. Now, you could also do this kind of communication with email. So it's ideally you would actually con connect those two channels together uh, along with your other communication. But let's discuss email automation uh, for now a bit. So why do we talk about email automation? And I know that not all of you are already using it for those that are using it. Uh, I think you already see um, some of these positive uh, benefits that you can have um, for your online business. So first of all, email automation is actually quite of the low cost, uh, on the low cost end of all the marketing channels out there. It's because mostly the platform that you buy, uh, whatever it is, get responsible or any other platform that you use is actually based on the number of contacts that you have. So the bigger the list, the bigger the opportunity for you to make money, uh, the, the higher the, um, the fee will be. But at the same time, compared to paid channels, uh, so paid uh, PPC campaigns, it's, it's much more affordable. And most importantly, once you acquire someone's uh, contact details, the email address, you get consent to communicate them. Well, that's going to be much cheaper because you don't have to get their permission again to communicate with them. And you have a high precision campaign uh, ready for you because you have the exact uh, address that, that, you, that you can use to contact someone directly. Um, that, there's a big uh, return from your uh, from campaigns using email automation. Well, firstly because the you know, the cost is low, but also because you can repeat the uh, the process on and on and on and on, and uh, and on the platforms that you use are not that expensive. Um, the average return on investment in email is currently on thirty eight dollars for every single dollar spent. Thirty eight to one dollar spent. That's data from twenty twenty one. Uh, from DMA. So that's actually one of the top results in online marketing channels. Now, email is also an owned channel. Sometimes it's said it's a leased channel. That means uh, that means you don't have to pay to play uh, per se. So uh, once you get someone's consent, you can contact them in the future. At the same time, we know that there are those big players like Gmail, Hotmail, Outlook. Well, Hotmail, Outlook, the same thing, but you get the point. Um, so these players, they affect uh, your deliverability. Now, if you play safely and you um, actually manage your email deliverability properly, you build your email list properly, uh, you follow the email best practices uh, to get higher engagement, then you don't have to worry about email deliverability and going into spam. And last but not least, high measurability is one of the top benefits of email uh, campaigns because you can measure many things, including opens and clicks. Now, uh, again, with uh, Apple's privacy policy, privacy changes uh, that were coming into force late uh, last year. Not everything is as measurable as in the past, but it is still one of the top uh, channels in terms of measurement. So I highly recommend that you try to use it for your online business. Now, uh, one of the one thing that I want you to keep in mind that um, with customers, online customers, the customer journey is quite long and you can and should be aiming to 
uh, to target your audience at the very uh, at many touch points. So it shouldn't be a communication one to one communication that you do, let's say, every week or every month that you send an email blast. You should be looking at how they change over time. At the beginning of your conversation of your relationship, they have different needs than they do after they've been on your list for a month or two or even a year. So this is um, what you see, what you can see right now on the screen is an example of a lifecycle communication uh, designed by Holistic Email Marketing uh, from uh, Kath Pei from Holistic Email Marketing. This is a great example of uh, different kinds of programs that you can be doing and designing through email automation. Now, the one I want to focus on is at the very beginning of this conversation, uh, seeing that most of the audience that we have here haven't actually used email automation. Uh, before. So we're going to be looking at the overlays, basket recovery, that, that kind of stage at the beginning of the conversation where we just acquired people. So what can we do at the beginning of this conversation, of this relationship that we're trying to build here? We can start by sending welcome emails. And welcome email is my favorite type of communication. It's simple to set up. Uh, it, it keeps your email list clean because every time you send a welcome email, it checks the platform that you use, get response, whatever it is. It checks whether the address that it sends to is actually um, existing, whether the message is uh, delivered. So if, it, uh, if that message generates a bounce, we, uh, we hear that, we get that information. And we, if it's a hard bounce, that means the address doesn't exist. We get rid of that address from your list. So you don't have to keep sending uh, communication to them. If it's a soft bounce, the situation is slightly different. We try a few uh, attempts, make a few attempts to reach out to these people. But again, if, uh, if the address is, for example, um, the kind of a spam address that they use for all email communication, then we're going to see that uh, because their mailbox might be full. Now, a welcome email can help you also set up the expectation for your communication, the style, the tone, how frequently you're going to be uh, mess messaging with your audience. And most importantly, it's highly engaging because everyone expects to receive a welcome email after they signed up to your email list. They want to see that the, uh, that the subscription went well. So uh, they want to know that the address that they provided worked and that whatever you put in that email, uh, whether it was a discount, uh, that is going to be present in their inbox. That's why the unique open rates and click rates are above the charts. They're slightly uh, more than three times the average open rates uh, that we get for all the other regular communication. And uh, that looks like seven, uh, no, six times higher than the click rates that you normally do. Uh, the, I see a question about uh, get response removing uh, bounced addresses. Yes, we do remove those bounced addresses. And we also add them to a block list, uh, making sure that you don't email those people uh, again if you have a different email list uh, with a get response. Uh, so that's going to help help out to weed out those bad addresses. Uh, OK, um, some of the things that you can include in your welcome emails to make them exciting, to make them engaging for your audience. First of all, you can uh, show your sign of appreciation. You, you should be saying thank you, uh, thank you or welcome to the family because people just granted you the permission to contact them in their inbox. Uh, so you can definitely do that in your email. You can share your brand story, especially if it's something that is uh, exciting that is different from the mass market world, from what everyone else sees. Uh, you can share some key information. For example, if you have great customer service, uh, if you're working in particular hours, or if there's a special way to return uh, products, or whether there's a, mm, whether, I don't know, uh, for example, you have some policies uh, that people should be aware of, or that your products are made of special fabrics that they should be uh, aware of. Um, you can also share top places or categories that people s should start the conversation with, your relationship with. And um, based on research, actually users that start, uh, start their journey from a product category rather than just generic page, these are the people that are most likely to convert. So keep in mind, maybe you want to share your best, uh, best categories or favorite products or best rated products in that welcome email. Uh, you can also mix email and social media. If you have a community in Instagram or Pinterest or anywhere else, uh, you can share the links uh, inside your welcome email. And of course, you can share a promo code email as well. Um, here, for example, you can see an example from Patagonia. They do many things in their welcome email. They welcome you to the family. They tell you what kind of communication they're going to be sending to you in the future. Uh, but most importantly, they also offer their help. They tell you how you can reach them in physical and online uh, way. A couple of more examples uh, that you can have a look at. Here, for example, uh, we have Portrait Coffee that uses a discount code in their welcome email. At the same time, they also offer you uh, a welcoming message. 
plus they show you the team behind the portrait coffee and they show you some great uh, social proof and um, reviews from their existing users so many things that will make you uh, reassured they will reassure you uh, that you are in the right place and that you should have uh, signed up for that email list another example here that you can see is from disco uh, in their email they actually share the story behind the brand and why they are designing or developing their uh, their skincare products and they tell tell you this long story about how the mass market products are supposed to be designed for men and women but in, uh, essentially if you look at the uh, ingredients uh, they are all the same and in their story they tell you in that email that they are different and you can shop with them if you want a real product designed for your skincare for your needs um, um, to give you an example here's an example of, of one of our customers that used a welcome email series to um, to engage their users and I really like this example because first of all I do drink a lot of coffee uh, and they, secondly is because they are actually a cool brand that's called Land Cafe and they and uh, they combine their love for roasted coffee so great beans and Land Rovers so they travel the world to find the, uh, the best beans and what they designed in this campaign is a six email long uh, welcome series through which they educate their users and it might seem like a lot of emails uh, on one side but when you look at the exam uh, of the results um, it actually pays off so they say that 50, uh, 54% of their sales comes from that welcome email series. And because it's actually built around this notion that they want to educate their audience first, they want them to like them first. And only once they've earned trust, they will be ready to buy. And of course, they don't send you know, the discount code at the beginning. They want to first educate you. Uh, but in those six emails, they tell you about all the reasons why Land Cafe is different from any other brands out there. They tell you what, how to understand, for example, the labels on your packaging, on the coffee that you're receiving in your, uh, in your uh, box. Uh, they tell you about the different origins, where the coffee comes from, what type of coffee goes well with what kind of products. And also within that email series, you could have decided that you like tea because they also sell tea right now. So it helps you uh, actually move your audience into two different flows. Um, so that's uh, that's one example of what you can do. And to give you a, a, pro a proper, let's say, explanation of how to set it up, uh, for example, in Get Response, there are two ways to set up a welcome email series. You either use an autoresponder, where you all have to do is just build your email and decide that on day zero, it will be sent out to your audience. And that's as simple as that, just you know, one step set up. Or you can set up a marketing automation workflow which also is super simple because you have ready-made templates for that. You can use a welcome email a template that first starts by uh, looking at all the people that sign up to a specific list and then do whatever action you want them to do. And in this case, it's a send a welcome message. It's as simple as that. Uh, and the process is uh, honestly, it takes only a few moments if you have the content to build your, uh, to build your message. Now, the second example that I want to, um, the second type of email communication that I want to share with you is card abandonment. The reason for this is it has a massive potential to bring you revenue uh, because around 69% of all online shopping carts are being abandoned. And there are many reasons for why this is happening, mostly because people are afraid of the additional costs that are added, especially like in the US, you have all the taxes added only at the end, or like if there are shipping costs. The other reason is because card abandonment communication has some high conversion rates. Based on data from Berlin, that's almost 19% of conversion rate. So imagine every fifth person actually converting um, from receiving that uh, card amendment email. Again, the setup costs are super simple, super low, because it only takes a moment to set up a card amendment email. To give you an example of what you could do inside of your card abandonment campaign, you could either send a single email, for example, after 15 minutes of noting that someone has abandoned your email, uh, abandoned your card, or you could send out a series of emails after 15 minutes, two hours, or 24 hours. At the beginning, I would say just go with one. And what you can go inside, you can I just send, either send a simple reminder, for example, uh, offering help or just letting someone know, hey, this product is still waiting for you, let's say for the next 24 hours, if you want to buy it. Now, you could also add some customer reviews if you have social proof that your product is one of the best out there, that people should be buying it because if they don't, well, they're going to lose out. And at some point, you can also offer a discount code, but we don't want to lose our profit margins that easily, so you might want to test that out.
to give you an to give you one more example, um, here's a case study from our customer, uh, Celsi. They're actually an online furniture store uh, seller. They did a cool thing. So they did an A-B test of their card abandonment campaign. And um, as I said, you can, you can do many things in your card abandonment campaigns. What they did um, and generated a lot of revenue for them is they tested first email with a reminder without any reviews. And then they sent an email with a reminder but also uh, some additional reviews uh, from, from their customers. And as you can see, the uh, click to open rate and conversion rate were much higher from, uh, from the, let's say more, uh, I don't know, more tailored communication because it shows you um, some additional social proof and reasons why you should be buying those products. Um, then they test another thing and they tested actually an email with a discount code also without and with reviews and the one with reviews had much higher conversion rate. So you can you can try that in your communication, especially if you already have uh, those reviews ready. And how do you do it and get response? There are two ways. Again, a simple way is to set up uh, something called quick transactional email. All you have to do is connect your online store and, and a couple of clicks and then pick up the rule. Here is the rule called abandoned card email, and you just design the email inside our email builder. And that's that. You don't have to set up any additional rules. It will just be sent out once after someone uh, leaves the card after 15 minutes. Or you can decide how many. And there's a different uh, way. You can use it via marketing automation platform. And we also have an email templates or automation templates for you to use. There you can build a sequence of emails, or you can add additional elements and tags and if you really wanted to, you could even connect uh, multiple channels there as well, because we don't only use emails, but we can also serve, uh, for example, via SMS, uh, web push notifications, if you use uh, web push notifications to, uh, on your store as well. OK, so what happens if you don't have those reviews? Or what happens if someone does buy? You should also automate your communication post-purchase, post because you just want to build a long-term relationship with your audience. Now. Um, in your post-purchase communication, you can do many things, uh, but most importantly, you want to use it to gather the social proof, uh, to generate some upsell and cross-sell opportunities. Uh, you can profile your users, uh, add tags based on their, for example, on the things that they purchase or on the things that they uh, click in your emails. And uh, you just want to make sure that people are interested with you, not only uh, or with your communication, not only after they've seen a discount code. So you want to play the long term game. Um, so what can you do inside of those emails? Again, you know, for social proof, you need to ask for opinion. Uh, you can provide useful tips. For example, if you have a complicated product or one that requires additional care, let's say you bought a leather, uh, leather wallet, uh, people might not know that they need to use some additional cream to take care of that wallet so, so it doesn't look bad after three months. You can also invite people to your community, uh, social media especially, Instagram and Facebook. And you can uh, offer related products or services or additional content if you have any, for example, guides or uh, best tutorials to, to have a look at. Uh, here are some examples of how different brands use post-purchase communication. Uh, on the left, you can see one email that is asking for reviews. This is a great uh, example. Um, not very design heavy, but uh, asks for the right thing, so for the review of the product. And most of the people actually trust online reviews, uh, myself included. So if you can uh, then generate uh, some positive reviews around your product so that uh, you'll be able to sell to more uh, users later in the, in, the, uh, in the journey as well. And here uh, on, the, on the other side, on the right side, you can see an example of an email that actually tells you more about the brand and about the products that you just purchased. So it reassures you that you're in the right place and that you trusted the right brand. All right, and how do you set this up? Again, in marketing automation, you can use, uh, or email automation, uh, you can set up a workflow like this. So one that checks if someone purchased a product, adds them a tag, and then after some time, sends them an additional message, uh, for example, asking for those reviews or uh, additional, let's say, um, recommendations. It might be a bit too soon, 15 minutes after someone purchased from you to offer them additional products, but you know, uh, you, can, uh, you can decide when this is going to happen. And last but not least, the, uh, the loyalty program. Now, I know loyalty programs are usually more difficult to set up and not everyone wants to do that. With email automation, you can set up a basic loyalty program that you're going to be uh, using to actually find the best customers uh, that follow your brand, that uh, purchase your products or um, read your emails, click in your links. 
you can use that to actually incentivize and motivate uh, purchase behaviors. So turn those first time customers into loyal customers because you're gonna offer them some perks and rewards. Uh, you can ask them for referrals and you're just gonna be long playing the long-term game with your audience rather than just uh, looking at you know single purchase and then forgetting your customers uh, because uh, you're just gonna be sending them, let's say Black Friday campaign uh, emails and some other discount codes. Now you can use loyalty program to actually keep the uh, people engaged and loyalty programs are actually great because um, they can people that follow brands that they like are actually, um, according to latest studies, are actually more likely to purchase from the brands despite, uh, for example, the price being slightly higher than uh, those of competitors. They're more likely to refer those brands to their audience, uh, to their friends and networks, and they're just generally uh, more likely to follow those brands uh, that they like. So it makes sense to engage in loyalty programs. Now, when you're going to be designing a loyalty program like this, you need to think about uh, loyalty thresholds. So when exactly you consider people as loyal and you, so you have to have different levels, um, you want to know, you want to decide when you're going to communicate it, whether you, it's like it's a good moment to communicate to new users or maybe you want to wait after they've engaged with you for some time, let's say after a month of being in your subscription. And of course, you need to decide what you're going to uh, offer people in in exchange whether it's going to be freebies, complimentary products, discounts, because people want to know, they they will know uh, if you're actually offering them something of value. And some of the cool loyalty programs I've seen in, in the past, they even did, uh, they did um, offer some free swag within the communication. Uh, you know, every, let's say every month they were picking uh, from their loyal newsletter subscribers um, who is going to receive their swag. So some examples, for example, here uh, you can see from Chipotle, uh, they have a loyalty rewards program. That's what their email communication looks like. Um, that's an email cut in two. So you can see that they offer some additional uh, discount codes, but they also let you know that, hey, we do have a disc uh, we have an uh, app that you can use to use this discount. So it actually uh, kind of uh, helps you uh, make this user and those customers more, um, let's say, stick with you with your brand because you have them in their email with their in their app or an, on their website and social media. And another a very simple example of an email that tells people, hey, you've just earned 10 cocoa beans. And how do you set this up? Now, this looks slightly more complicated than in the past, but this is a simple email automation workflow that just checks if someone uh, purchased from your product and then checks like how much they've spent. If they spend, let's say, $200, uh, it checks every single day. If they've spent over $200, then goes further and uh, assigns them a tag or sends them an email. And then again, checks if they've spent over $500, they check every day and then sends them another uh, email once they, uh, and uh, let's say they met this threshold. So um, by the way, we will be sending over those uh, those examples of automation workflows to you later on. Uh, we're actually in, in the process of developing an ebook. So we're going to be sharing you with that a bit uh, later after this webinar. Um, so. This actually marks the end of my presentation. So uh, to share with you some additional places where to look for inspiration, we've gathered some uh, insightful websites. Uh, definitely visit uh, napoleon.com slash blog, angryresponse.com slash blog for more insights on email automation, email marketing, and social media uh, insights, both for marketing and customer service. Now, if you want to look for inspiration for, uh, for emails, there are two websites, really good emails. Beautiful emails uh, designed by various brands. Actually, all the examples that you see in today's presentation uh, are from really good emails. So do definitely check them out. And milled.com, that's a slightly new website that I have only recently uh, found. Uh, it's it's kind of a website that signs up to all the newsletters out there. So you can see and actually spy on your competitors or other brands that are, uh, let's say, in your space. So you can have a look at what kind of communication uh, they use. Uh, in their well, in their emails. Um, all right. Before we jump to the Q and A session, uh, Kasha and I actually want to share with you um, some information about an offer that we have actually prepared for you today. So, starting off with Get Response, uh, if you want to uh, try it out, uh, of course we have a free plan, but you can also use a discount code uh, that you see on the screen is Ecom MC120 that offers you twenty percent off on for for the first year on any plan that you choose. Uh, get response, just go to getresponse.com slash go. And Kasha, do you want to tell us a bit sure. more? Yeah, yeah, I will take over. And if I can ask you to send the link on the chat. Of course. 
Yeah, so you can get 35% of all our uh, annual plans. And all you have to do is register, for example, using the link that Michal has just shared on the chat. Uh, you have a two week, weeks of free trial, so test the tool, uh, see if you like it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team on the chat. You can check our video resor resources, our knowledge base, and if you like it, just say hello to our customer support team on the chat and send this code their way, e-commerce automation 35. Perfect. All right. So that's that's it for you on the on the chat. Uh, but let's jump to the Q&A session and let me have a look at the of the questions that we had prepared before. Uh, so one of the questions actually uh, in your presentation was uh, was this. So I'm going to actually yeah. let it. Yeah, have a look. <laughs> sure, I, I saw this one. And actually, I would go, uh, I would say video content. However, not just IGTV, but rather Reels. And this is a this is a quite new feature, and it's relatively uh, easy to um, to reach a broad audience with Reels. Um, we've actually tested it on our own profile. I invite you to our Instagram, NapoleonCat.com. This is our handle. And we achieved great success with Reels. We are actually growing our profile, and Reels really help us broad, uh, reach broad audiences. So, yeah. That would be great. Thanks. And there's one for me. So, what about email fatigue? On customers receiving too many emails from sequences, what strategy did you advise uh, advise to prevent annoying customers? That's a very good question, and actually one of the main reasons why uh, people uh, have deliverability issues is that they develop too many automation sequences and they forget how many messages people actually receive. Uh, so they have many automation sequences, plus they send out those, let's say, weekly or twice per week newsletters. And what I would suggest is being very, very uh, transparent about your uh, the option to unsubscribe. So not hiding the unsubscribe link somewhere at the bottom of your messages, but actually reminding everyone at the bottom, like, hey, you received this email because you signed up to this. If you ever feel like we're sending you too many emails, then opt out and follow us, for example, on social media. Or you could actually develop two, uh, two types of lists inside uh, whatever platform you're using. And you could offer people like, hey, if you want to opt down, we're just going to send you to another list that only sends out like a digest for every month or every two weeks and so on. And that, the, the biggest issue um, is that you know, many people will not unsubscribe from your, your emails if they receive too many messages. So if it happens that they're annoyed, they actually most likely will just ignore your message. And once they ignore it, the spam filters will see like, hey, this message is not important to them. They will move it to spam after some point, and it's going to affect the market's deliverability in the future. So uh, yeah, keep uh, keep track of this uh, email communication. If you ever see like higher bounce rates, it is likely that you already have some deliverability issues, or it might be temporary. But um, do make sure to let your audience know that they can always unsubscribe. And, uh, move to another list that they did. All right, so let me have a look at any other question. All uh, right. Um, okay, there's a question for you, Kasia. Mm -hmm. On real, but I don't see any other profits. No more followers, no engagement. I try to engage and I am doing short but educational reels about digital transformation. That's reels or just for reach, or am I doing something wrong? Well, I, I would encourage you um, to simply experiment. Something that works well for us is uh, collaborations um, with different um, influencers, different creators from our niche, and we create reels together with other creators, and it's shared both on their profile and our profile. And this is something that um, gets us the highest number. Yep. Yeah. It allows us to reach the broadest audience, but also gain new followers. And it also uh, attracts traffic to our website um, and attracts leads to our website. So this is one thing that I can really recommend. Um, yeah, and just experiment. Um, we have an article on our blog. So I invite you also to our blog. There we are sharing some uh, ideas what you can do to make your 
reels more engaging to make your reels work better for the growth of your business. Perfect. Thanks, Kasia. So there's a quick question for me and I'm, and then one for you as well. So one is, does GetResponse integrate with Shopify? Yes, it does. Uh, just go on to GetResponse.com uh, and then in solutions, you're going to see um, e-commerce page. I'm going to share that with you later as well uh, and probably in our email communication. Now, we're in the process of actually getting our app into the Shopify App Center. Uh, so whatever app you see there, like with some uh, let's say not the best reviews. That's not our app. That's something that was developed by someone else and it's not very well maintained. Our app is actually in the review process. Too. So uh, we have already uh, over a thousand users using Shopify, if I'm not mistaken. So it is, you know, it's a legit app that is working already, but it's just in the in the process of being added there. And there's one for Kasia. Mm -hmm. Is there a platform you use to find niche IG influencers? Oh, mm. I used to uh, use, um, I can't remember the name at the moment. Uh, Michal, maybe I will, um, I will. Um, sure, you, yeah. if you remember it in a moment, then feel free to yeah. add it. So I will just any... write it on, on the chat. Yeah, Perfect. just let me see. <laughs> sure, and there was one actually before, uh, I don't think it's marked as a question. Let me have a look. So someone actually asked about other social media platforms. Uh, do you have recommendations beyond Instagram uh, for promoting, uh, you know, e-commerce businesses? Well, everything that is um, focused on visual content because you want to showcase your product. Uh, so I would say uh, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, uh, and even YouTube are perfect but you need to uh, dig deeper into the demographics of your target audience and discover uh, which platforms they use mostly. So for uh, Gen Z, it would be probably TikTok, but for uh, millennials, uh, YouTube would potentially work well. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I see, so I found this question, but yeah, I can see more and more brands using TikTok nowadays, especially via influencers to promote their uh, e-commerce businesses so definitely one of the platforms uh, to have a look at if you're growing your uh, e-commerce business yeah. um, all right let me have a look at other questions um, there was definitely a question about good response pricing so I do recommend just going on that page uh, on that link that I shared with you before uh, and on the public channel it already has this discount code added so you'll see the price after uh, of the, after the discount was added. Uh, okay, there's a question for you. Uh, have a look. Okay. Did I get you correctly that I can block like all these spammy comments from my social apps? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, you can use the uh, automation rules to uh, block or simply automatically, automatically delete all spammy comments under your Instagram and Facebook apps. Great. Now this is helpful. And like, you know, I know, yeah. I don't know on the social media, just, you know, because mm -hmm. I don't manage it, but on, on the blog, for example, and e all the forms that we have for guest writers, we get so much spam out there. So I imagine only that even, you know, if you have ads on social media or just posts yeah. that there's a ton of spam. Mm -hmm. one, one example is that sometimes your competitors try to make use of your paid reach and they simply post links to their products under your ads. And you can you can simply uh, set a rule that will be automatically hiding or deleting uh, all comments, including uh, including uh, links. Oh, yeah, that's not that's not a best uh, you know approach that people are doing. As in you know, uh, well, just you can hide jump. them and then uh, automatically and then make sure manually uh, if uh, if this is a good link. Oh, you were saying about yeah the yeah about their practices. <laughs> no, I mean yeah. you know. So the world is small there's you know karma going around so i would imagine that you know going for a low tactic like this is not great so yeah uh, just yeah watch out at your competitors but i know <laughs> that people do that uh i don't think any okay let me have a look if... mm -hmm. oh wow that's a so that's a question about metaverse web3 to create more immersive customer interaction thinking about get response creating metaverse rooms versus land pages website that's that's a uh, that's a detailed question. I have uh, I have no clue at this moment, to be honest. So I can't really tell you what are the future plans. You know, we're currently focusing on uh, multi-channel marketing, 
uh, you know, webinars like this one today, email automation, websites, uh, serving customers in the best way we can, especially e-commerce businesses these days. Uh, so I'll have to answer this, you know, uh, this vaguely way uh, as I did just now. Um, I can see that we're about to, uh, you know, finish our time. So let me just go back to the presentation once again. For those that haven't seen the link, uh, here are the uh, the websites, and in the public channel you should also see uh, the web the websites, the URLs that we shared. So here's here's one, and there's the other one. Um, once again, I'd like to thank you all for joining us for, uh, for today's presentation. I'd like to thank you, Kasia, for joining us today as well. I really learned a lot from you today, and I really appreciated our uh, partnership here today. Um, so, folks, if you enjoyed it too, I do hope so. Uh, we'll be sending you our recording sometime soon, probably tomorrow. And if you happen to have any questions for me or Kasia, just reply to us uh, on via email. We'll be doing this. Or Kasia, how can uh, how can people find you? By the way, in case they wanted to ask you any additional questions. Sure, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, it's Kasia Smolnowska. Mm, mm, it should be written somewhere over here. Or you can just go to our website napoleoncat.com, and you will find a contact uh, email there. Probably easiest to go over the uh, the official website, but in case you reply to our emails, uh, we'll just send it over to you later. And once again, thank you all for joining us today, and have a wonderful rest of your day, wonderful evening, and we'll be sending you the recording sometime soon. Bye. Bye.